What's good, Commanders fans? Adam Peters has made another signing. This time it is running back Jeremy McNichols, who was with the San Francisco 49ers in 2023 last year. So he has familiarity with Adam Peters and with Anthony Lynn, who is now on the coaching staff. So a lot of connections this free agency, a lot of Cowboys signings, a couple of Niners guys, or yeah, um, Cleveland Farrell and now Jeremy McNichols. And then, of course, a lot of Cowboys guys, and then Zach Ertz with the Cardinals, with Cliff Kingsbury. So a lot of a lot of familiar familiar to Ben Johnson with Marcus Mariota. So a lot of connections with these guys for sure. But Jeremy McNichols didn't do much last year. He's five foot nine, two hundred five pounds, twenty eight years old. Went to Boise State. He was a dog at Boise State. He was a straight up dog. I'm looking at some of his numbers at Boise State. Looking at some some of his college numbers. He put up. How many yards rushing? 1,300 yards rushing and then 20 tubs, 20 touchdowns. 20 times he got into the end zone in 2015. And then six receiving touchdowns. So he got into the end zone 26 times in 2015. Uh, 26 total touchdowns in 2015. 27 total touchdowns in 2016. So 23 touchdowns rushing in 2016. Four, <clears throat> four touchdowns receiving in 2016. And he ran back kicks. He did not do any punt returning. But he ran back kicks in two seasons, and then it kind of scaled down. Like, the more his rushing attempts went up, the more his kick returning attempts went down and stuff like that. Uh, but he had 1,300 rushing yards in uh, 2015, 1,700 rushing yards in 2016. I'm reading his college stats because he doesn't have a lot, of, a lot of NFL numbers. But if you look at his NFL numbers, 2017, only played in two games. 2018, only one game. 2019, one game with Jacksonville. He's with, he's with the Colts. Played in one game in 2018, San Fran in two games in 2017. He was drafted by the Buccaneers, though. Then Tennessee, 2020, he played in 16 games, zero starts. Uh, of course, behind Derrick Henry. 2021, Tennessee, again, 14 games, zero starts behind Derrick Henry. Three games with San Fran, zero starts, zero numbers across the board. Probably a special teams guy. Um, but if you look at some of his highlights, man, third and 21 against the Jets. Screen pass, takes it for a first down. A nice catch out the backfield from Ryan Tannehill catches a touchdown pass. So I know these catches are from Ryan Tannehill, who's not even on. Is he even on the Tennessee? I think he is still on the Tennessee Titans, but he's just been injured so much. But a couple of these passes from Ryan Tannehill that he called from, for touchdowns. 2022, he did not play at all. So I see zero stats for him. But just to explain like what kind of back he is, he's more of a third down back. J.D. McKissick light, but not as explosive when I, when I see him play. He is quick, though. He is twitchy. Not going to make a lot of guys missing a phone booth, but he is slippery. He breaks tackles, so he's good at that. Um, Jaden McKissick light, Chris Thompson light, but I think both of those guys are more explosive than him and faster than him and just quicker than him and more elusive than him. No knock against um, Jeremy McNichols, but you, you kind of think of those guys, and that's kind of what his role is going to be. He did line up on the outside as a wide receiver sometimes, so I do like that versatility and that positional flex where he can make he can make a move and get open. And uh, move the chain. He's a chain mover for the most part. He's a chain mover. Or that third and 18, he's going to catch a pass, bring it up to make it third and 12 or third and 10 or something like that, possibly get you in field goal range. So he's that kind of guy. He's a darn good um, pass blocker as well. He really he really prided himself in pass blocking. He talked about that in college. He said, I, quote, I took a lot of pride in that. I wanted to protect my quarterback. Jeremy McNichols, who only allowed one sack over his last 237 pass block snaps. So this guy is a tough guy, uh, very tough, very stocky kind of guy out there. So I'm intrigued to see what he does here. Um, to talk about what I think he's going to do on this roster, of course, you got B-Rob, you got Eckler, you got Chris Rodriguez. I think if I had to guess today who, who the three backs, I think they're only going to keep three. I don't think they'll keep four. They might keep four. They didn't draft Chris Rodriguez. Eckler in his press conference said that he came here to play with Brian Robinson. That's not the reason why he came here, but, you know, it was like some answer he said where he was like, yeah, he knows his role. is He's going to be playing with B-Rob. He's not going to be the number one back for the most part. And um, Chris Rodriguez, I mean, he, he might be the odd man out. If they keep three, I think they would keep this guy over, over Rodriguez because I think, like we talked about last year, when they drafted Chris Rodriguez, everybody was like, oh, they need to draft a speed back. They need to draft a third down back because – you know, we already had Antonio Gibson, but they, they just needed to change the pace back. Somebody who can hit a home run. I, this guy, you know, he can hit some home runs here and there, but he hasn't really done it much in his career. So I'm not going to say I'm like expecting him to do that. But I still would think about drafting a running back in the sixth round. Since we have a bunch of picks, like just a speedy back, a home run hitting back, just a quick speed home run hitting kind of back in the fifth or the sixth round. That's something I would definitely take a, a consideration in doing. 
Um, but, you know, we'll see if they think this guy can do it. But I think the three backs have had to predict it would be B-Rob, Eckler, and then um, this guy, Jeremy McNichols, probably making it over Chris Rodriguez. I, mean, I like Chris Rodriguez. I like him a lot. I like, he played pretty well in the Jets game. So there's no reason to, like, release him or anything like that. But I do think they need a third down back. And, of course, Eckler. Eckler is the third down back, clearly. He's your change of pace, quick, speedy, lightning back. B-Rob's the thunder, the hard-hitting back. And then Eckler's more of your finesse back. He's going to hit a home run, you know, get a catch, run up the field for, like, 30, 20 yards or something like that, 15, 20 yards on third down or second down, use them as a wide receiver. So, but I do think we need to change. I do think we need to get some more home run hitting backs in here uh, rather than, you know, kind of being repetitive with, with what we have in B-Rob. Kind of like Chris Rodriguez, they do similar things. So I think we do need to load up a little bit more on some speedy backs that can hit home runs and, and, and change the pace for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at his numbers, 20, 47 attempts for 204 yards in 2020, 2021, 41 attempts for 156. Uh, yards on the ground, one touchdown on the ground in 2020, four yards of carry in 2020, 3.8 yards of carry in 2021. So they're just solid stuff. Nothing that really wows you or stands out. Let me see kick returns, punt returns. Kick returns, he had two kick returns in 2021. His longest kick return was for 16 yards. So not a lot of production there either. Uh, I did look at his draft video and Bucky Brooks was like saying that he had a fumbling problem. I don't see any stats about fumbles on there, but man, like just, just looking at his college stuff. Like I know it's so long ago and it's kind of like, who cares? He was on the Steelers. He was on the Falcons, Jaguars, Bears, Tennessee Titans. I already talked about that. He did play for Snoop Dogg's youth football league in Long Beach, California. I know there was the show on Netflix about that too. Uh, Snoop Dogg's football team and whatnot. But uh, man, like, he um his college numbers are, are insane. Two time two time second team All Mountain West 2015-2016 as well. But uh yeah, he he put up some crazy numbers. Uh he ran a 449 40 yard dash as, as well, which is solid. 35 and a in, 35 and a half vertical leap. 35 and a half inch vertical leap as well, which is which is pretty solid, pretty athletic. Uh, but I'll read his strengths and I'll wrap this video up. Strengths, able to elude sudden traffic and back backfield, not much dancing. Can shift rush tracks without tra tapping brakes. Fluid, flexible hips allow for multiple jump cuts. And direction changes up to second level. Great vision and quick to process feel in front of him. Trusts his offensive line. And doesn't need point of entry for committed downhill approach. Anticipates flow of second level defenders and responds accordingly. Good feel for interior running. So, I mean, you guys get the point there. Weaknesses may not have lower body power to be NFL tackle. Breaker can be felled by first level arm tackles and average just 2.1 yards after initial contact this season. One speed runner without the burst, big burst to rocket through line of scrimmage and onto the safety. So there was a play against the Broncos. It was like a Sunday night football game or something like that. His helmet got ripped off. He broke the tackle, ran up the field for like eight yards. Didn't get the first down, but was close. Um, so that's that's one thing that he's that he's kind of known for. Like when you look him up, uh, some of his highlights and stuff like that. But yeah, I talked about the third and twenty-one. The Jets game was really good. And um, let me look at the numbers that he had against the. Um, against the Jets real quick and then I probably probably will wrap it wrap it up on this item but yeah Adam Peters made a bunch of solid signings nothing like to wow you or anything like that a lot of one-year deals a lot of a lot of guys who are just solid some deaf guys for for sure some guys that may not even make the roster like and I know some people talked about punt returning for this guy possibly or kick returning I don't see him doing punt returning I would keep Jameson Crowder as the punt returner I would not change that up I would just keep it as is and let James Crowder do his thing because he's just a huge upgrade over Dax Mill. Dax Mill, of course, didn't do anything for the most part. So it's not like it's not saying he's upgrade is not saying much. But at the same time, like James Crowder got a touchdown, a punt return touchdown. The last time we got a punt return touchdown was guess what? When James Crowder was here back in 2016. So um, but yeah, the Jets game is where he went. He went off. He had 12. He had 12 targets, eight catches for 74 yards and had a long, a long, run, a long catch for long receiving catch for uh, 27 yards where he got that first down. Um, so that's the game where he played really, really well. And that that's like a JD McKissick type type of number type numbers right there. Chris Thompson type numbers. Eight catches for seventy four yards. Those are those are Chris Thompson and JD McKissick. That's kind of that's the kind of stuff that they used to do when they were here. So um, let's see, let's see what this guy does, man. Let's see if he's impactful or or he's just a, a camp body or something like that. We'll see. I, I think he's gonna make the roster though. I think he'd probably make it over Chris Rodriguez just because of the familiarity with Adam Peters and Anthony Lynn. That's that's just my take on it. They all, all four of them can make it. I personally, I would only keep three running backs. I would only keep three running backs and six wide receivers. I don't personally, if you have, if you, if you're, if you're good at the top, at the top of your roster, I don't think you need to keep seven receivers. That's just my take or like four running backs and stuff like that. 
I, I would just keep it six receivers, three backs. So we'll see what happens. But all right, you guys, you guys let me know what you guys think. Health Commanders, peace.